Yeah, the stage has long been set, but now both teams are confirmed. Only two West Indian players, though, will be involved in the Indian Premier League final on Sunday. After Shimran Hetmeyer, Robin Powell and their team, the Rajasthan Royals, failed to set up a date with the Kolkata Knight Riders team of compatriots. Andre Russell and Sunil Narayan, after falling to a 36-run defeat to Sunrisers Hyderabad in qualifier two earlier on Friday, chasing 176 runs for victory. The Royals stuck to 139 for seven in their 20 overs as Powell, six, an impact substitute, Hetmeyer, four, struggled for timing under pressure before their eventual demises. Hence, it will be a Hyderabad versus Kolkata showdown in Chennai. Nikhil Uttam Chandani is still with us as we look back at today's qualifier two and a major disappointment for Shimran Hetmeyer, Rothman Powell and the Rajasthan Royals. And before I get to how Sunrisers Hyderabad got the job done today, I want to get a quick word in on um, Rajasthan Royals and how disappointed they would be that they didn't get across the line in qualifier two. Yeah, I think they will be disappointed, Ricardo, because they sort of restricted SRH to a score, which I thought was slightly below par. Yeah. Um, on a pitch that was quite good for batting, um, not like what we're used to seeing at Chennai. Yes, I think it did get a bit more spin friendly as it went on, but no real huge spin like we've grown used to seeing sometimes. However, what I'll say is, I could not believe some of the tactics from Rajasthan Royals today. Um, you've got someone like a Shimron Hetmai in your team who bats at number four and number five for the West Indies. His, one of his biggest advantages has been the ability against spin over the years. And religiously throughout this season, they have sent Ashwin ahead of him. They've sent Dhruv Jurel ahead of him. And I get it. He's been a great finisher in that sort of role for Rajasthan. But I thought today when you've got two left arm spinners bowling in tandem, nine overs together, well, sorry, eight and one of Markram consecutively, they missed the trick not sending someone like a Hetmeyer in who's a left-hander and can sort of combat that left-arm spin and force Captain Pat Cummins to think elsewhere. The two left-arm spinners control the game and when Hetmeyer and Robin Paul came in, it was pretty much already gone. Yeah, and you spoke about the two left-arm spinners, uh, Ahmed and Sharma, um, three for 23 and two for 24 respectively. Um, incidentally, you could look at them as sort of part-time spinners and they were the ones who changed the game. And I think maybe this will be even sweeter for Sunrisers that it was the weakest aspect of their game. Um, I don't want to say it's weak because it's not, yeah. but it's their lesser suit that took them home today. No, to support your claim, before today, they had the lowest and least amount of spin wickets of any team in this tournament and by a long way as well. So this is something that we've not really seen before. And I think to come at this time, against the KKR, who have two very strong spinners, will help. But what I think we have to give credit to is, is the spin bowlers themselves, because it wasn't just, they just pitched the ball and, and Rajasthan made all the mistakes. You look at that delivery to get Hetmeyer, it was a carom ball. You don't often see a left arm spinner bowling a carom ball. They bowled well. They controlled the game. They used the long boundary very well. And I think it was supported by the fact that they bowled to two right-handers pretty much for the majority of the innings. Yeah, and I know we're spending a lot of time talking about, you know, the bowlers and how they went about their business. But I just want to spare some time for Heinrich Klasson, mm. who has had um, a really good IPL. And he's one of the players, Nikhil, that really stands out in our local CPL as well. What did you think about his innings today? Yeah, the rumour on the street is that Klasson will be returning to CPL this year. But... Uh, Mariah, what I'll say is, this man is a simple, quintessential T20 player. When you look at the way he went about that innings today, he's so known for all the boundaries and everything. But the situational awareness today to understand, look, it's a different pitch, different conditions. They had lost wickets. He only hit four sixes today. That's the only boundaries he hit. 18 singles run and four twos. And that, to me, was the difference between the two teams. The way he's able to manufacture innings in different ways, depending on conditions, to me, that was the huge difference today. And no matter what, you just can't stop the guy. The consistency at which he produces across the world in varying conditions, it is amazing. Do you think a lot of that goes to his experience? Because I feel like even during the breaks, or like just say breaks between mm. innings, you can notice shots of him speaking with the coach, you know, analyzing what's coming up. Like he's not a player to just, you know, hit his runs and then go sit down and look on at the game. He's always analysing and it's so evident because he's always chatting with the coach. 
Yeah, I think it's a few different things. Um, one would be experience. He's not just come around. He's been around for a long time, but this is where sort of he's found that prime of his game. But I also think it's probably the planning and preparation that goes into it. He has found something in his game and he's really been able to unlock that. And it's worked. That formula has worked across conditions. You think about South Africa where he plays. He's come to the CPL and done yeah. well, obviously in India. And he's been all around the world and he's excelled. So just to see him, I think he's an example for every young T20 batter to watch because of that versatility. It's not one dimensional. He has so many different ways to sort of attack you and, and beat you as he did today. Yeah. Just one more before I give it back to Ricardo. Sunrise is 175 today. Will that be enough when they face a KKR team? Mm, depends on the pitch, of course. Um, KKR are a different beast when it comes to the power, the way that they've gone about batting. I think it comes down to Sunrises and their spin again. Um, I expect Chennai to have something in it for the spinners. Um, they've got Cummins, they've got Natarajan, but I think if those two spinners and maybe a Markram can come into the game a bit more, I think it can make a huge difference because that's what they were missing when I compare them to KKR. The batting intent is quite similar. Fast bowling is also quite similar. The spin is where KKR are way above them. I think it's like a 20-something difference in wickets. Yeah, uh, You know, Sunrisers, they've had to use impact substitutes quite early in their last two games. Um, in fact, even Ahmed came in as an impact substitute for today's game um, on the batting end mm. and then ended up starring with the ball. What's his role mm. come Sunday for the final? How do they now utilise him given what happened today? I think similarly, to be honest, because you have Abhishek Sharma who will play and can bowl four overs of left arm spin, he's probably the more, I would say he's more the more established of the two. And he bowls a lot domestically as well. And that carrying ball, I keep mentioning it, but to get Hetmeyer, it's serious skill to produce a delivery like that. Um, so I think you have those four overs. I expect Markham to play. I don't think you make changes so close to the final, in the final. So you've got those two different options. I expect Shabazz to do the same thing. I think he will feature, but his batting, as he's shown this season, has gone to another level. And I think when he was at RCB, he did produce some gems with ball in hand. I don't think they'll be able to bowl nine overs consecutively at that KKR team, yeah. but they can, I think, use them in different ways, mixed in with the seamers, depending on the surface. Yeah. Yeah. Is the pressure on KKR on Sunday? Yeah, massively. Similarly to what like it was on Rajasthan, because these two teams have dominated, I would say, three quarters and for KKR, the entire tournament. But Rajasthan and KKR have been in the top two for more than half of the tournament. So there will be expectations on them. Um, I think I'm curious to see if Sunrisers keep up this intent. They've stuck by it all season. They've been all out attack. Will they do it in a final when pressure's on? Maybe they're chasing a 220 or maybe they're bat batting first and having to set a target. Yeah. Um, for a final like this, and especially for KKR, who have gone so well for the entire campaign, they've also, they're have also they also coming off a recent victory in Qualifier 1 against Sunrisers. Yeah. So everything points to them as being favourites. Given everything you know about this team mm -hmm. and the players they have in the unit, how will they handle the moment? Because it's such a key part of winning championships. I expect them to handle it well. I think, listen, Gautam Gambier has brought a different philosophy, a different ethos to this team this year. But the core and nucleus for the last five to seven years has remained the same. It's been Russell, it's been Narayan. They've got Shreya Sai, who's captain for the last couple of seasons. I don't expect the moment to get the better of them because of the experience that they have. Whereas for Sunrisers, and Abhishek Sharma hasn't really been in the spotlight like he's been this season. Travis Head, last couple of games, left arm spin has shown him up. So... It'll be interesting to see, but again, Sunrisers, if Pat Cummins can get what he's got out of this team throughout the tournament, it's fearless. So whether they're faced by this title of a final, if they come out firing, they could easily be, we've seen them 270. If they can bat first and set maybe 240, it's real pressure on KKR because of that expectation. Yeah, well, we'll see how things will unfold on Friday. By the way, Nikhil, you've gotten it right to this point. You said it would be a no, Sunrisers versus no. Kolkata final. You were not here. Um, I he got changed it right, his Mara. mind. Right, I didn't change. That. So, Ricardo, no, 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 when no. you, yeah, 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 yeah. When yeah. I was here, he Thank said it you. would be a Calcutta versus Sunrisers final, and he went as far as saying that Sunrisers would turn the table on Calcutta. So yeah, so on, you changed on Wednesday. I don't know what she's talking about. I don't remember the that. The viewers know the truth. Eh? I can only remember the episode the, of Ricardo. The, the, you, the viewers <laughs> so know the I'll truth. So I'll take the win and hopefully a KKR win. Right, well. what, did, what did he so say? When no, you he's were jumping not here, too quickly. When you were yeah. not here, Rajasthan Royals of course won. Yes. And they would have been in with Sunrisers for the match today. Yes. And Nikhil said with the momentum and everything that they're on, he's going to have to change his prediction now and go with Rajasthan. So I don't know why Nikhil is acting like if the viewers didn't 
You know, they, they watch every day. We can actually pull the YouTube video if you want. I'm feeling the football predictor right now. You <laughs> all are just too hard on me. But listen, what I will say is I picked on both days. On both days, ladies and gentlemen, I picked the KKR team to win the IPL. And well, I'm sticking with it on the third day. The, moral of the story, stick to what you go with. Don't but change But all I'm saying mind. is if KKR win, all is forgot, forgotten and I'm still the cricket prediction king. Okay. Okay, you, King. You know what is hilarious about all of that? Him saying that he feels like the football predictor. <laughs> Everybody knows who that is. You don't even have to call a name. Let's get to a break. We'll be back with more on the Sports Zone. <laughs>